One of the most common questions that I get asked by women, whether they're clients or followers of mine, is when should I be intimate with a man that I'm dating? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hello, I am Zach Rohde, and I show you how to create the relationship of your dreams by learning how to inspire a man into cherishing you. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, make sure that you hit that subscription button below. Make sure you hit the notification bell below so that you know when my future videos come out and be sure to like this video because I assure you it's going to be a fantastic time. All right, so let's start answering this question. When is the right time to be intimate with a man? First of all, some I'm going to give you a bit of my history here because this is actually really important. My background is I used to be, first of all, really shy, couldn't talk to women until I was 23. Then I became a pickup artist and learned to become very successful with women, learning how to meet women, date women, have sex with women, a lifestyle that I don't promote in any way anymore. I'm happily married, but I also don't promote it to men. I don't think that it is a way of being devotional to women. I don't think it is a way of being devotional to women, and I also don't think that it's a good use of a man's time either. And the reason that I say that is because men and women are built quite differently. I used to think that giving a woman an amazing time, take her out on a couple dates, bring her into the bedroom, have sex with her, maybe have sex with her a bunch of times uh, over a period of time, whatever, is a huge gift to her that that would make her life better in some way. Because yes, on the surface, she gets an incredible experience if a man knows what he's doing. The problem with that belief is that, well, women are not men. <laughs> a woman's physiology is quite different. A woman has feminine programming, a feminine instinct. Now, that might be covered up in wounding. A woman might present as much more masculine. She might present as someone that is totally fine with having casual sex and doesn't see it as a big deal. Doesn't matter. I mean, yes, women that are much more in touch with their feminine instinct, having casual sex is going to hurt them a lot more. Or sex that wasn't supposed to be casual sex, but the man, or they, they break up relatively quickly. We can call that casual sex because it wasn't really... Uh, functional committed relationship that's going to hurt women th those women much more but it's going to hurt all women okay and this is one of the things i'm not going to touch on this much maybe i'll do a whole other video about it but it's one thing that i really don't like about the whole you know male influencer red pill community which is basically shaming women for being intimate with a man too soon or for having sex with too many guys total in their life, body count and all of that. I don't shame women, by the way. I never shame women. I'm here to help women because I genuinely care about women. I genuinely care about helping women have better love, love lives because I love women. And I have several very important women in my life, so I don't see why I would, including my daughter, so I don't understand why any man would be shaming women other than because of their wounds. So... The point is, the reason I'm getting into that is because women will often be shamed for sleeping with a man too soon, and most women already feel bad enough as it is, right? They don't need to be shamed further about that. That just only hurts women even more. It will be helpful for men to lovingly show women why it is a problem to have sex with men too soon, but also, we got to really get rid of the hypocrisy here. There's like, Men aren't going to be emotionally negatively impacted in the same way that women are by having sex too soon. Like I could go have sex with 100 women if I was single uh, over the next month and I'd be totally fine. But would I be devotional? That's the thing, right? Like <laughs> it, it's sort of like being a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Where it's like, yeah, you're fine. And sorry, like a Fortune 500 company that's screwing over the planet or people in some kind of way, which most are, right? Yeah, you're fine. You got your paycheck. But what was the damage in the process, right? And what is the damage for women? The, the, the damage is that let's actually paint a picture to, to explain the damage. So you meet a man. He's great. You go on a few dates with him and you really like him. Let's say you go on five dates. So it's even more than the three date rule. I don't really believe in the three date rule. So you go on five dates. I don't believe in a five date rule either, but we'll talk about that soon. You go on five dates with him. You really like him. You feel relatively comfortable with him. So you're like, and, and he's leading towards kissing and 
touching and all that stuff, and it ends up that you had sex with him. And okay, like it seemed like he really, really liked you and he wanted a serious relationship and whatever. And you guys seem to be communicating really well and there's lots of comfort. So you did it because you, you had some assumptions in your mind. And then afterwards, the next day, he's kind of more distant and you can just feel like his heart's more closed in some kind of way. And then you get anxious, you get needy and you go into one of your control patterns, whatever that is, whether it's asking him a bunch of questions or whether it's just avoiding communicating and hoping that he reaches out and you're feeling really not good inside or whatever the control pattern is and once you guys start communicating again however that happens you end up pushing him away because of all the feelings that you're feeling he becomes more and more withdrawn eventually you guys stop seeing each other completely and it ends and man that sucks you really like this guy now you feel really bad You might feel bad towards men, like you've lost some faith and trust in men and the masculine. And you might also feel worse about yourself and your self-worth, your value to a man, right? That you really thought that this man really liked you and it turned out that he was more just interested in sex. Is that going to be good for you? Even if the sex was really amazing? No, it's not. And it's going to probably impair future relationships that you have with men and future dating experiences, right? If you feel worse about yourself and you trust men less, that's going to hurt you. And not just the future outcome, but also just the emotional, like the the bad emotions that you're going to be feeling inside, that's going to be painful as well. So that's what is typical for a woman unless she's really... I mean, there's going to be some women who are much more in their masculine and much more shut down. They're they're kind of like more okay with casual sex, but it's really because of their wounds. But most women, it's going to be not feeling very good, especially the women in my audience. So that should answer part of your question about about when to have sex with a man, which is like, It definitely shouldn't be too soon. It shouldn't be where there's a high chance that he's going to abandon you. And it certainly shouldn't be where it's just casual sex to begin with, right? One other thing I'm going to briefly bring up here. It's also a waste of a woman's time, right? Because what is that communicating? If you're spending this time having casual sex with a man and you're getting hooked on a man, well, you're wasting your time that you could have spent finding a much more devotional man who actually wants to be with you, right? So what does that say about your self-worth? Really? Okay. And again, I'm not shaming. I don't, I don't shame. I'm just telling you that like that, that is going to be impacting your self-worth and it's reflecting on your self-worth. So what the feminine instinct needs is to feel safety. Okay. A woman needs to feel safety in her body. And I don't just mean physically, like, you know, a man's not going to attack you and that kind of stuff emotionally or physically. I'm also talking about, he's not going to be abandoning you. And he's going to be able to take care of you. And when I say take care of you, I don't just mean financially. Financially would be great. But even more so, at least early on, what's important is emotionally. So if you think of the, going back to what I was talking about, the typical situation where a woman feels needy and anxious after a man has sex with her, a man tends to feel a little bit more distant. That's normal. Are you going to, is that man going to be able to take care of your feelings? If you communicate them in some way, even if you don't communicate them perfectly, is he going to become more distant? Is he going to, you know, get reactive? Is he going to shame you for feeling certain feelings? Is he going to lose interest in you because you feel certain feelings and you're sharing that? Unless you're basically 100% certain that a man is going to be able to take care of your feelings, that you can share anything with him, then it's too soon to have sex with him. And if you go by that metric, that means that like 99% of the time, 99% of women are having sex with a man, it's too soon. Because that hasn't been uh, fully established yet that a man can do that. And like typically by the time for most women, when they have sex with a man, they have no idea if a man can actually take care of her feelings because you haven't been communicating all your feelings. Like one of the pieces of advice I give my students, my academy students is even by the end of the first date, you should have shared your feelings, your negative feelings multiple times. And if you haven't, you're hiding. 
you're hiding your heart because no man's going to lead perfectly. You're going to feel at least a little bit of anxiety or anger or whatever. You need to be sharing your feelings so that you know if a man can handle them. If he's capable of holding space for your feelings and, and helping you with your feelings and caring about your feelings. You need to know that early. And you definitely need to know that before sleeping with him. And speaking of sharing feelings, this is one of the main things that I really help women do. Because women are not good (laughs) at sharing their feelings, at communicating their needs. And I don't say that in a judgmental way. It's just the way that women have been conditioned. We want to fix that. I'm here to fix that. It's my mission to fix that. So if you struggle sharing your feelings with a man, especially negative feelings and especially negative feelings about him, and also sharing the needs that you have in regards to his leadership and how he's treating you. If you're scared of doing that or if you do it in kind of a judgmental way where you don't get a good reaction, I'm here to help you. That's what we do in our academy program for our women students. And it's also what we do in our master class. If you have not done one of our master classes and you can attend, then go to our master class and, and like book your spot for this master class. And, and show up because we're going to spend two hours showing you how to communicate your needs, how to communicate your feelings, how to open up your heart, how to wear your heart on your sleeve, how to inspire a man into taking care of you and cherishing you the way that you deserve and need as a woman. So you can inspire that safety, so you can inspire that provision, so you can inspire that leadership. That's at polaritymasterclass.com and all of my links are below this video in the description. Okay, all my important links. So just go there, go to the polaritymasterclass.com and sign up so we can help you change your life. So you can start having much more amazing experiences with a man. And if you're watching this for some reason and you're already in a committed relationship, fantastic. The masterclass is going to help you just as much. The communication is basically the same for single women and women in relationships. You're learning how to communicate your needs. Okay, so back to the reason for this video here. You need to ensure that a man knows how to take care of your feelings, that he's not going to abandon you. And that's typically going to take a lot longer to be sure of than three dates or four dates or five dates. I'm not going to tell you exactly how many dates that's going to take because that really depends on how you're showing up with a man, how you're communicating with a man. It depends whether you've taken our master class or whether you're an academy student and know how to communicate in this way and have learned how to move through the fear. If you're not, then it's probably going to take you a lot more dates to get to that point. Okay, If you know how to communicate really well, it might take fewer dates. With that said, my actual belief now I'm not saying every woman's going to follow this. Not every one of my academy students is going to follow this. In fact, I don't think most are. Is a woman shouldn't be having sex until marriage. And that's the craziest thing for me to say because prior to me getting married, I mean, I that's certainly not how long it took my wife and I to have sex, first of all. But I just didn't have that belief at all. I just thought that was ridiculous. I thought that was archaic and so old-fashioned and just outdated and like dumb. <laughs> And now it's completely changed. Why has that changed? For two reasons. Number one, I have worked, I have over 300 women students in my academy program and a good chunk of them, like I think over half are single, or at least they started single. Now a lot of them are in amazing relationships, but they're like family to me. They're like, they're like my daughters to me in in a way. Like I really care about them and I know how much they've been hurt when they make choices to sleep with a man too soon, when a man can't take care of her. And I know that the the safest way for a woman to, like time for a woman to have sex is in marriage because that is the true commitment. It's like, it's not just a piece of paper. I'll do a video on this, but it's not just a piece of paper where he's making that commitment to the woman. Like I am fully committed to you for life. Now, of course, with marriage, a lot of people aren't, don't stay fully committed, but but it is the in a large way the thought that counts is like yes he has made that choice to commit to you in front of you and in front of his family and friends and all, and all of that stuff and there's a reasonably good chance that he's going to keep it and then now you're going to feel so much better about submitting to a man because he's given that promise publicly to you so that's number one it's like seeing my students get hurt and and you know some of them do wait till marriage and that's great some don't but at the bare minimum at the bare minimum make sure that you have really shared your feelings vulnerably and multiple times and the man's committed to you at least in a relationship bare minimum and he's able to take care of your feelings in that relationship that would be the baseline the other reason that this has shifted is having a daughter 
man, a lot has shifted for me since having a daughter. And I look back on the way that I treated women and like, I actually thought I treated women relatively good because I'm, you know, I'm a kind person. I'm a playful, fun guy and I always have been. But it's like the stuff that I've done in regards to being intimate with a woman outside of a relationship, my benchmark is like, would, is it right for a man to do something to a woman that he wouldn't want a man doing to his daughter? As, and I'll do a video on that at some point. I got to write that down. It's like if a man is uncomfortable with that, if he doesn't like the idea, if he has the thought of punching a man who does that thing that he's done or is OK with uh, to his daughter, then that's not an OK thing to do. It might be a consensual thing to do, but it's not an OK thing to do. It's not an ethical thing to do. But that's more on the man's end. For the woman's end, it's about self-protection. Right, like I would want my daughter to get married to a man before choosing to be intimate with him for her own safety and for her own self-worth. Okay. Last thing I will say, if you have slept with a whole bunch of men, five men, 20 men, a thousand men, hopefully not. <laughs> I'll do another video on this too. But, you know, it, it's not a huge deal. I mean, I don't think you've been helping yourself doing that, but you can... We'll call it like repent for that, the, like feel any shame or whatever that's come up around that. And it's about how you're choosing to be in the future. So don't listen to those red pill, angry guys who hate single mothers. The, some, some men will care about that, but what is most important is who you are choosing to be now and in the future. So this will make a big difference because it's not, and I haven't even touched on this. This is important too, but can you sleep with a man too soon, even outside of a relationship, and he'll still want a relationship with you? Yes. Okay. That is true. Does it make it less likely? Yes. But the main reason it makes it less likely is not actually the act of sex itself. It's because the act of sex too soon is representing your low self-worth, right? A woman who chooses to sleep with a man outside of commitment is communicating a lack of self-worth. And what, she, what he's actually less attracted to is the lack of self-worth. So it's like he might be attracted enough to you to sleep with you, but he's not attracted enough to want to be with you and cherish you and provide for you and commit to you. And that's why you got to shift your self-worth. And part of how you can shift your self-worth is to stop sleeping with a man too soon. Is that the only thing you need to do? No, there's many things that you need to do to shift your self-worth. Another really big thing that you need to do is learn how to communicate your needs, learn how to communicate your feelings, learn what I call and teach feminine communication, learn how to express yourself vulnerably, learn how to shift out of your control patterns and into fully letting go as a woman, learning how to follow a man's lead in a way where you're honoring your heart. This is what I teach women in our academy program to give them transformational results where they get, you know, they they get their dream relationship with a man. And this is also what we show women how to do in our 2-hour masterclass program. We you know, I don't hide anything. It's like I just jam it packed with as much information and we we even role play what this communication looks like for you in a short in a 2-hour period of time. It's just packed. There's no fluff. So if you haven't done our masterclass yet, go to polaritymasterclass.com. Again, my links are below in the description and sign up before it's too late. We're going to have a fantastic time. You're going to learn so much. You're going to understand men so much better and understand what your role is with a man to inspire him to take care of you and cherish you, both whether you're currently dating or whether you're already in a relationship with a man. See you there.